thank you for your offering to be sure to be used in building of the church. We'll take you just about five minutes of Brother Tom's time. We're going to take away from this message. But we talk about faith, and we know that our brothers and sisters in this church, they have faith. Their faith is strong in God. In Christ. You need to ask the question how strong is our faith, though? Today, how strong is our faith? Chapter 11 in Hebrews, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Jesus said, if we had the faith of a grain of mustard seed, we could move mountains. To us, that might seem impossible. But with Him, it's not. But what do you put your faith in? Who do you put your faith in? We need to be like the men and women in chapter 11 of Hebrews that had faith. Moses, Abraham, Enoch, Isaac. These men and women that stood the test of time, that went through fire, hell, torment. Do you believe in things that you don't see? Things you don't touch. Things you can't feel. We have faith in those things sometimes. Jesus Christ is like that. We can't see Him. We can't feel Him. We can't touch Him. But yet, we have faith that He is there. That He is who He says He is. Amen. And that He is the Redeemer world. We need faith like these men and women had. Verse 6 of this chapter says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We have to have faith. Christ is who he says he is. The sermon that I'm going to do in the fourth Sunday for Jimmy is entitled, Who is Jesus? Who is the man who came and died on the cross for you and I? 1 Peter <clears throat> chapter 1 Verse 7 says, The trials of your faith be much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, yet love, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though we in, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the, the salvation of your souls. We need to increase our faith in Christ today. We need to increase our knowledge in him. And how do we get that? It's by studying his word and then applying it to our lives and knowing that He is who He says He is and that He is coming back one day to get you that has faith in Him, that has given your life to Him, that has turned everything over to Him. 
confess that he is Jesus Christ and has been baptized and raised in the walk and newness of life and has kept that faith to the day of salvation. When he comes back to receive you, that that faith has been true, that faith has been secure, knowing that in him is who your faith lies. Just like the old patriarchs of old, they didn't see that salvation, but they had hope in it. We need to increase our faith every day. There's so much out there to turn our life around to turn our lives and our eyes back into the world, to press forward to the mark of the high calling, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we'll talk about this message. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's, it's been a, it's been like a long three weeks. Um, glad to see you here, Dan. It's good to have you back. We've missed you. Uh, different people talk about hearing that voice. And it was absent. It's just good to have you in our presence. I'm glad to see everyone here today. I've got, I've got kind of a potpourri, I think, of a scripture today and, and a message. And what I want to talk about is love that we can obtain from Jesus Christ and from God. And what that love can do for us. And I also want to talk about Satan and sin. Used to, I was in some, uh, I can't remember what it was. But anyway, speech classes. And they would tell us that um, when you do a speech, you tell them what you're going to tell them. You tell them, and then when you get done, you tell them what you told them. And today we're going to talk about Satan and sin. In Ephesians 6.12 it says... For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Just as someone mentioned, I think, Brother Dan or someone, that there was another shooting last night somewhere in Texas. That's what I'm trying to tell you today of the wrestling against. And, and what I hope to do through this message is that you yourselves can analyze yourselves and understand where the war is and understand where it starts from that you may be able to head it off. Because we all suffer tribulations and trials in this life and sometimes we think we bring it on ourselves and sometimes we may. So all of these things that are mentioned here, all these powers, they're behind the scenes. Things that happen around us all the time and we're just not really understanding. We don't see the process sometime building or happening. And it's Satan and sin. In 1 John 2.16 it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Okay? So every sin that we have in our lives can be tracked back to one of those avenues. Either we have pride in our life, either we have lust of the flesh, or either we have lust of our eyes. And here's the thing, is that Satan wants you to think you're the only one that has this problem. And we're told in Corinthians that it's common amongst all of us. That if, we're ha if I'm having some kind of problem, everybody else is having the same problem at the same time. In 1 Peter 5 and 8, and I think Jimmy mentioned this somewhere this morning, it says, Be sober and be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So if, if in your daily walk with God you have problems, you have to sit and think, where is this coming from? Let me go back a few steps. And it, when I worked, we would, we would do a process, and, and somebody had abused somebody, we would slow time down, and we would back up and say, wait a minute, let's... Let's talk about what happened last week and let's work our way up to this abuse and see the chain that brought us to abusing somebody. 
Well, that's what I'm wanting to do today is let you all to slow time down and back up and think, why did I have this mindset that made me do or created in me what I'm doing? Satan. He's sin. Satan, you know, he talked with God and, and God asked him where he was in Job and he said, I'm walking to and fro in this earth. This, Satan is the prince of this world. We're told that in the Scripture. So when we do something wrong, it's because the prince of this world has control of us. And we have to understand that. Brother Jimmy read a message last week in his Scripture that I think kind of went over our heads. And I want to read it to you again. I'm going to read it slow. And I hope it sinks in. It says, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith, Brother Paul talked about that, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. If you don't have love, you are nothing. So it doesn't matter when you sit down and think, well, you know, I've helped the needy and I've done this and I've done all this in the Lord's name and I justify myself that I'm such a good person. But if you don't have love, you don't have anything. And the kind of love I'm talking about can only come from God that shines down in our heart and changes our attitude, changes the way we act, changes the way we think, and changes the way we treat other people. The love of God. More than six times it's noted in the New Testament that God tells us to love our neighbor as ourselves. It's a command. You know, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I've got to back up on that. You don't know what that person said about me. You don't know what that person did. You don't know the way that person acts. And you want me to love them? <laughs> Not going to happen. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 44, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And you're going, wait a minute, God, it's hard enough to love these people I'm around, much less those people that are my enemies, those people that talk about me, those people say something, those people give me that funny look and I don't lie. If we can't love our brothers and sisters here, do we think we're going to earn a spot in the kingdom of the Lord with God? Do you think God's going to have somebody in that kingdom and they're over in a different place and he goes, that's where I put the people that don't love each other. When Jesus was talking to those people in the Bible and he said, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you, he was talking to people that thought they were in the kingdom. They thought they were going to make it into heaven. But he said, No, wait a minute, no. You just you you took on that badge down there, but you wasn't doing anything to earn it. You walked around and let everybody think you're a Christian, but you didn't love anybody. You didn't forgive anybody. You didn't help somebody. And you think you want in today? Just as he told those people. And I say this out of love, and you think, boy, you did that like mean minister going again. I want everyone in this building to go to heaven. And I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to tell you what the Scripture says. Because we need to get it right in this Bible. <coughs> I've done three funerals in the last three weeks. People that weren't expecting to go. A young 25-year-old that gave herself too much medicine. Not thinking about it. Two others fighting for every day they can get. Saying, I'm not going, I'm going to fight. The last time I talked to Paula, she said, I'm not giving up on this. When will your day be, as Jimmy said? When will people say words over you? 
So how do we measure up to the scripture? I sit and thinking, I, I worked in some hay yesterday afternoon and I have a lot of time to think when you go around and around and around the field. And I remember the report cards that I used to bring home. Mom would sign them. She always signed Dad's name. I don't know what that was about. Now I can't ask her. She didn't put her name. She put hers. But on that report card, there was a little thing for each nine weeks. And one of the things was attendance. What's going to be on your report card that God gives you for your attendance at church and church functions and church gatherings? You have to answer that yourself. What would he say to you? Then there was a little box down there that said conduct. <coughs> when was Jesus' life? Was he remembered? Is yours going to say you got along well with your peers? You got along well with your enemies? You loved them? You helped them? Even though you didn't understand? When you get down to the grades and it comes to the grade in the class of love, what kind of grade are you going to get? You know, some of those classes used to, there was a satisfactory or not satisfactory. You have to judge yourself. So is it God or righteousness or is it Satan and sin? There's no straddling the fence. Either we love people and we are doing righteous things or we're serving Satan and sin. It is that simple. I want to tell you some of the things that Satan that, that's come to me that he uses in a disguise the things that we're wrestling with that we don't think about. One of them is anger. I'm mad at somebody, I'm mad at the world. And it carries over into our life. People see that. I was thinking this little song, and now I won't, my mind won't let me something about here. Somebody's Bible, and their life daily they read. What's the next line? Don't let it. Yeah, so be careful, my dear brother, pay someone you mislead. Satan will let us be mad at people so we won't love them. I don't love them. I'm mad at them. They've done something. They hurt my feelings. I don't want to be around them. What are you going to do when you get to heaven? If you can't love somebody here, you're not going to love them up there. Envy. Oh, they've got something I want. They do something better than I do. Understand these things are through the pride that Satan uses this venue to make us have feelings about other people which are not love. And then there's spiritual adultery. We get away from God. Oh, we come here and we sit down, but do we study His Word? Do we pray to Him? Do we show acts of kindness and love to others? He talks a lot about in the, in the Old uh, Testament how the people, his people, his tribes would go about whoring after other idols and not worshiping him. And that's what we're doing today. We're letting the world fill us up with things and we're not loving each other. We're not helping each other. We're not building each other up. We're going about tearing this down. Is it any wonder why people looks at the church and says, why would I want to be a part of that? Satan uses the past. He can embarrass you. Tom, you remember what you did back years ago? And so we walk around afraid that somebody's going to know that they're going to bring it back up or do something. And we wrestle with that. Because we all have a past. None of us are perfect. Jimmy quoted that this morning. No, not one. We are all, by the mercy and grace of God, cleansed with Jesus Christ's blood. We're all sinners saved by grace. 
God tells us in Psalms that He forgets those sins as far away as the east is from the west. Now, if we can believe that, and when Satan, here's the thing is we've got to understand when we get this attitude, we've got to ask ourselves, where is this coming from? Why do I hate this person? Why do I dislike this person? Why do I not want to be around them? And maybe it's your own pride. Maybe you think you're better than they are. Maybe you think they're, uh, they're not cleansed as good as you are. The Bible tells us not to judge either. If you go to Galatians 5.19 and you look at the works of the flesh, those are the things that Satan uses to combat us. But if you'll read the last part of that verse, it says, those that do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So you need to be honest with yourself. Go to Galatians 5.19 and start reading those off and think, am I doing any of that? And I need to improve if I am. Yeah, I'm doing this, God. I need forgiveness about that. We need to be remorseful and asking. It's not like we're just checking something off. We need to be ashamed if we're committing sins. We need to blush. In Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, it says, Let all bitterness, I'm talking to Tom, as well as you, all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. We want God to do all these things for us to forgive us of this, forgive us of that, and we don't want to do it to our brothers and sisters. We want to make sure we've got a spot in heaven. We'll ask him to do that, but no, no, I don't know about doing that for somebody else, God. You don't understand. We are to have the mind of Christ. Christ didn't hate any brothers or sisters. He didn't avoid them. There won't be any cliques in heaven. We will all be there praising God as it should be, and it should be here as well. So I'm going to ask you, I've told you about Satan and sin. We've talked about love. So what device is it in your life that Satan is selling you to put a wedge between you and a brother or sister? I don't know if they're really a brother or sister. That's between them and God. If they say they are, that's between them and God. No, they may not act like you do. Maybe that's a good thing. Everybody doesn't see things the same way, but it's between them and God. And I sit and think about people saying, well, you know, I want to go to heaven, but I, I don't like this person, I don't like that. And I sit and think about Jesus Christ hanging on that cross and I think one of the songs we said today writhing in pain and it should not be one of the verses. Beaten so bad that you couldn't even tell who he was. And he looks down and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And yet somebody looks at us funny and uh -uh, I'm not forgiving. Is this the mind of Christ? that we have in us? So what avenue is it of those three that He's causing you to commit sin? And we need to slow time down and go back and say, you know, I've got a, I've got a problem with this. And I need to pray about it and I need to work it out. Instead of living with it. We wrestle with Satan and sin. That is the cause of all of our heartaches. You're not going to get any of this from God. He doesn't like evil. He doesn't tempt with evil. Satan does. That's his domain. That's what he enjoys. He'll make you think he loves you and he wants you to be a part of him, but he knows very well where he's going and he wants to drag everyone he can go to go with him there. 
So we might be a little lukewarm if he says, well, there's the kind of fish I can catch. They're not really hot for the Lord, and maybe they can, I can sway them to come my way. Maybe I can just keep them going in this state of being lukewarm, and they won't even know it until they wake up. And the Lord says, depart from me. <coughs> but glory be to God because of His love if you will ask for it can overcome these things with His love all this stuff doesn't even matter to us because the love of God is in our heart and not something from Satan and the sin we have to take our love outside these walls but more than that we have to show our love inside these walls Ephesians 5.14, Paul tells them to arise and awake from their sleep. I'm asking you today, if Satan has lulled you into a sleep to the point that you don't have love in your heart for brothers and sisters, and don't get me wrong, I think that we have done so well here for the last few weeks of helping people. in Sunday school, I think it was Deanna spoke up and she said, listen, I want every one of you all to stay for a meal because she said there are going to be plenty and she said, you will not be dissatisfied. She's been here two weeks ago with her mother and she's back in two weeks with her mother. So my thing today that I want to leave you with is that you need to wake up and understand what is driving you. Is it the love of God? Or is it one of those three venues? One of those things in Galatians that I spoke of that we're not even understanding that we're captured by that. We're wrestling with that. And it's silencing the love of God we don't even know. Because we're mad, we're angry, we're hurt. Our pride has been stepped on in some way. Or it's grown so big that we just think we're better than the rest. I'm going to leave those thoughts with you today. We're going to all stand here and sing number 358.